Okay, welcome to class. This is Journalism Media Convergence. Um, I'm going to pick up where we left off. Early in the semester, we basically looked at this sheet. I want to hand it back out again. Because we're about ready to transition into a new topic for us, and that's producing a news package. And I want to remind you that journalists today are different, or different skill sets than the journalists of yesterday. And that goes as well for people interested in public relations, which is another topic that we teach in our department, or any other media-related field. If you want to go into promotions, advertising, marketing, all different kinds of internet-based companies, you're going to have to learn multimedia. So this sheet, as we learned earlier, comes from Tim Harrower's textbook. He's one of the more popular writers of textbooks for journalism. And I, I pulled this sheet specifically because I didn't create it. People in this discipline are telling your generation you need to get digital skills. So at the first week of the class, we looked at this, and I said, this is essentially a roadmap to what we're going to have to accomplish before we're done this semester. And we're about 10 weeks in. So let's take a glance at it and see how well we've done. It says here that one of the things you have to be able to do is create a web page. Now, that's our last topic, and we're going to get to that in about two weeks. And we're also going to use blog software, so we're going to knock off that. Are you an avid consumer of digital content? We took a quick survey. All of you are. You consume digital content. Can you comment, chat, and tweet? Can you create content with your smartphone or your tablet or a video camera? You've all now shot some footage with whatever camera you have available. Could be a smartphone, could have been a tablet, could be you already have a video camera, and you've all checked it to make sure that the footage, the format, will work with Adobe Premiere, which is the editing software we're going to use. The next thing it says, can you shoot a video, edit, and post it online? That's what we're about to begin. Can you record audio, edit, and post it? We've already done that project. Can you record graphics and pictures and edit them and put them online? We've already done that as well. Remember, in the beginning of the class, we looked at what a binary file is because eventually all digital media files are in binary format, and they all exist in a computer file somehow. So we've learned how does text get stored, how do images get stored in a computer, how do audio get digitized and stored in a computer, and now we're looking at video. Lastly, it says, look, if you had to wake up at 9 a.m., produce a news package, and get it on the 6 o'clock news, could you do that? And that's exactly what we're going to tackle, start tackling today. So what we're going to do is begin to look at news packages. Uh, to make one more attempt to convince you that this isn't something that only belongs in the video de production department, let me take a glance here at the New York Times. You all know the New York Times is one of the most uh, widely circulated national newspapers that we have. Oops, when I get that, NewYorkTimes.org, there we go. And I just want you to be aware that every major newspaper now produces audio and video packages. Uh, audio, sometimes if it just have an interview, they're going to put it up as a podcast, for example. But they're all now getting into video. Even the Indiana Gazette, even the Penn, our local campus paper, shoots video and puts it online. But, so here's one of the most prestigious papers. If you just put slash video behind the name of NewYorkTimes.com, they have an entire section of video Honestly, that they produce. Sorry about that. And as most video today, it has a little ad in front of it so that they can pay for that service. And then we'll, we'll dive here a second into whatever the video today that New York Times decided to put up as its premier video package. We'll take a look at it real briefly and analyze it so that we can understand what does it mean to have a video news package. Now quickly, just raise your hand if you've ever produced a video news package before. One. One student has actually done this. So this is a brand new enterprise for you guys. So I want to examine what it looks like to have a news package. Now there's more than one version of this. So this is today's version according to the New York Times. I'm just going to turn off that light so you get a little better contrast on our projector. And we'll look at see what their package looked like today. TV box and million dollar art on a kitchen wall. That's today on the New York Times Minute. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court offered a sequel of sorts to its 2010 Citizens United ruling. That decision opened the floodgates of political space. I'm just going to stop and, and we're just going to start to think about what it is that we're watching. So for this news package, it didn't start with a stand-up and a reporter on screen telling you who they are and what station they work for or anything. It just dove into the content. And in this case, the content are actually still pictures. 
that have a transition from this still picture to the next still picture with a voiceover. Well, here's the good news, folks. You just turned that into me this morning, right? Everybody just turned in their narrated picture story that they edited in Adobe Premiere. This is nothing more than that, right? So even though I didn't tell you, what you've done already is essentially a version of a news package. You could go out today and work for a paper and produce a narrated picture story. Now your story was just of your cat or your mom's cooking or whatever it was that I asked you decided to make it of. So you had an, an easy opportunity to shoot pictures. But this is the New York Times doing the exact same thing that you just turned into me this morning. Now where we're going to go next is we're going to learn how to use live video and edit that in Premiere and make a little bit more of a standard looking news package. The reason the New York Times did this is probably multifaceted. One, they probably have a library of stock images that they own the copyright to. So it's very easy for them to go find a picture that's on that content, slap it in the editor and move along. And it's t more time consuming and expensive to go shoot video on location all over the place. And the New York Times might have a story that encompasses cities all over the country. It's just cheaper to use pictures for them. But they do have some live footage in this package, so let's keep going. Notice how they zoom in and out of just a tiny bit on that. Oh, there we go. All right, so here's some live footage called uh, a sound on tape or a sound bite where somebody is actually just talking into the camera. And you're going to shoot this. You're going to shoot somebody in an interview format. And we'll, we'll talk at a, a next week about how to shoot. We'll talk about techniques of framing and uh, what to do and what not to do to kind of move your footage beyond the amateur status. Today we're going to skip that lecture. We'll get into that another day. I do want to go back and say, though, there was nothing that fancy about those transitions. Everything that they did, they had one picture and then the second picture would be a little blink of light, and then the next one would come on, and the next one would kind of slide across the screen gradually. You've already learned how to build transitions between pictures in Adobe Premiere. It's just a different transition than the one you probably used. There's a whole library of them. Just drag and drop and you'll get a different transition, including the wipes that some of these have. And that part where those picture looked like it slightly zoomed in over time or it slid across the, the screen, we call that keyframing. It's a very simple technique that we're going to get into in more advanced editing next week. So before you leave this class, you can make this news package. Just a couple more seconds of this. Here's a guy doing a sound bite. Now notice, that's not that guy's voice, right? He looks like he's talking, but this is called B-roll footage. The reporter is doing a narration or a voiceover explaining the, the next part of the story. I mean, it's a well-written story. It, it always would be for the New York Times. So they're telling us the next part of the story. But she doesn't want to be on camera for whatever reason. So they put B-roll footage. It's called B-roll footage because it's not the primary footage of the person talking. It's extra footage that they shot, which gives you some visuals to look at while they're doing the narration and the voiceover. You're going to have to shoot this. And that's going to be probably the biggest challenge for you, depending upon the topic that you pick for your news package. You're going to have to go collect additional B-roll footage that you can bring into the editing bay and then use as clips that's going to entertain and give the audience something to look at while you're telling them the rest of the story. Now, if you pick a topic that's, got, that's hard to come up with visuals, you have an extra challenge. If you decide to do it on a new law or on financial markets or insurance regulation, what are you going to shoot B-roll footage of? But if you do it on, and I'm not going to make you do it on that kind of thing, if you do it on a club sport, on your Greek life, on an event your sorority is doing, well then it's a lot easier to figure out what footage to shoot and then bring that B-roll footage in. This is just another still picture. And then they're going to do a quick sound bite of this guy back on camera again. Okay, so it's just a, the video news package ends up simply being clip, 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 clip. I also want to point out that it moves very quickly. Uh, we're about a minute in, and I've, I've bet we've seen at least 10 different clips. If you do the math on that, that means each clip is probably no longer than six seconds on average. 
Actually, it's probably even a bit faster than that. As time has gone on, American audiences have expected faster and faster clips. They don't want to sit around for 10, 15 seconds watching the same thing. So there's even more pressure to get B-roll footage so that you can, put in different foot uh, you can put in different things so that people get something to look at at a, at a regular basis. OK, any questions yet about this, what I've tried to explain? So Lauren, you could do a video package today if it's just still pictures and narration, right, Katrina? OK. So let's move into what looks a little bit more like a student-produced news package. This is from Gonzaga University. It's well done. It's, it's at probably at a higher level than I'm going to demand you do on your first news package. I bet this is not the guy's first news package. But let's take a quick look at it. Just a few short years ago, Ira Brown was taking the mound here to Vista Stadium for the Spokane Indians. But now instead of taking the mound, Ira Brown is taking the court here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. I'm going to stop and we're going to analyze this as we go. First off, notice that the guy did not say, hi, I'm so-and-so. You don't have to start, your, in fact, I don't want you to start your news package with the word hi. We already talked about that when we did the audio NPR style audio package. And you don't even have to start with who you are. Many news packages are in, in, in broadcast television or in the context of a new show. So people expect that you work for the TV station. You don't even have to say you work for the TV station or what you do. You will always do it on the sign off at the end. And what I'd like you to do is say, hi, I'm Kaylee Toy, reporting for the journalism department at IUP. Something similar to that is all you need to do, like you did for your NPR style audio news package. But what he did instead is try to get you interested in the topic. And this is going to be about a player named Ira Brown, who was both a baseball player and now a basketball player. He did the extra work of shooting some of the footage in front of the Gonzaga's baseball stadium and then cutting to a shot of him in front of the basketball stadium or basketball arena. That, that's extra work. And we appreciate that in the business that we know he did extra work to go get a bunch of different shots in different locations. He was two years removed from picking up his gloves for the final time. B-roll footage. When a golden opportunity to pursue college basketball rolled Ira Brown's way. Rolled Ira Brown's way. And well, is that a coincidence? Did he think of rolling the basketball first and then he thought of that phrase later? Did he write the phrase first and then think I better get that shot second? It's, it's not clear. But it does allow me to say something very, very important. You can't just shoot the footage, sit down, and, and knock it out in editing. You have to put some thought into what it is you're trying to tell the audience and how you're going to tell it both with your words and with the video. So that's why I'm asking you to do an assignment by next Tuesday. By next Tuesday, I want you to put a Word document in, and I've got a handout related to this, that just describes to me in a couple of paragraphs what you think you might do for a news package or what you think you might shoot to get you ready for that news package so that when you sit in the editing bay a few days later, you have all the footage at your disposal. You also are going to have to plan out what you might say around the video footage. You won't be able to know that ahead of time until you see it, but that'll be a later step for you. Again, with the B-roll footage available, they can do what we call an L-cut. So I'm going to just take a brief second here. I'm going to have to use some chalk on the board after all. And describe for you what an L-cut is. So you've already opened up Adobe Premiere. You know that we put the video layers up here in a stacked fashion. And we put the audio layers down here. So if I have a clip, it has both a video component and an audio component. And they're synced together, right? The video goes with the audio. And this is the timeline going from left to right. Well, what they did in this case is they allowed the guy to keep talking. I need my eraser. But instead of just watching him the entire time, they actually cut out, stopped the video footage for a while, and put something else there, a second video clip or a piece of B-roll footage. So this ends up being in sync for a little bit of the time. And then the audio goes on continued with different video footage. And that looks like an L. So we call that an L-cut. You can do this in a bunch of different configurations. You could instead keep the video up if you needed to and cut off the audio and have some other audio play. That would just be a different configuration L-cut. But these are very common for news packages because it allows, in this case, for people to keep telling you the interview or the story or listening to the person, but you have something else to look at while you're watching. So I'll just turn it back on again. 
he's talking, we have this video footage playing there instead. Now they have a separate interview, a little sound on tape, sound bite here. Brown knew it was time to stop chasing a major league paycheck when his true passion called him back to the court. My true passion is back. I love, I love to be around it. It's just something that um, I can always show my best to at all times. Whether he's intimidating batters with a blazing fastball or owning the paint with thunder and stones, Ira Brown hardly goes unnoticed. Okay, let's stop that. So. Any questions about what that looks like at this moment? A student news package, and this is really well produced, would have a bunch of different footage, a well thought out storyline in journalistic writing. Person would do a voiceover. They might be on camera. They don't have to be on camera. Now, by the way, if you're very shy and you don't want to be on camera, I'm not going to force you to do a stand up. A stand up is where you get seen by the camera. So you'd rather just do the voiceover part. That's OK for our, for our class. And it's really just a practice uh, news package, so you learn the editing bay and the digital file formats that are required. So let's do something interactive for just a second here. Does anybody have uh, just an idea already of a news package that they might do? Jordan, what might you do? Uh, I'm going to focus on the IEP Men's Soccer Club. OK, so the Men's Soccer Club. So let's all help Jordan out for a second without him thinking about it. What might he shoot as footage, B-roll footage for this? Practice. All right, so we'll get some video footage of the players at practice. What's another idea? Mackenzie? Maybe like an interview with one of the players. OK. And we'll get some interview of a player. Now, the interview, if the guy is on camera, that's primary footage. So technically, it's not B-roll footage. It would be him being seen while he's talking. If we keep the audio and replace the video with something else, then we're replacing it with B-roll footage. But certainly we want that on our list. In the back row, what's an example of something else we could shoot? Other than just practice. Or something more specific. You have another idea? A game. A game, yeah. So we could get a game in there. But what, what at practice, what at a game could we get? Jordan. Passing, stretching. Bingo. Dribbling, shooting, passing. Uh, what was the other one? Stretching. Right there, he's got four different clips that he can bring back to the editing bay and use his B-roll footage whenever he might need it. Game. What do we shoot at games? Obviously, the player's on the field, right? What else can we shoot at a game? Back row, help me out here. Yeah, Mike. The crowd. The crowd? Yeah. And in fact, that's a really good thing to throw in because the crowd most likely is going to show emotion, particularly if it's a score or a really good stop, right? And you would like to get emotion on camera. And we'll talk later again about more and more details of news packages. But having emotion on footage is, uh, on camera is a really good thing for your packages. How about the scoreboard? Just to throw your camera up there for a few seconds, grab that. Now you got that B-roll footage if it's part of the story, particularly if it's the final score, right? Because that's something you're probably going to see in your news package if it's game footage. Anything else? Ryan, do you had your hand earlier? Um, I was going to say maybe catch the players at halftime, how they're like regrouping and collecting themselves, and okay. maybe at the end of the game, see how they feel. Uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the game when they're on the field? Yeah, when they're walking off. Yeah. You might catch their expression, right? If they won, they're elated. If they lost, they're sad, particularly if it was a close game. Yeah, that's good emotional footage. You might catch them doing a cheer or some kind of, you know, I went to a lacrosse game last night with my son, and they're all doing this big cheer before they go out with their sticks up in the air. That's good footage. Shows a lot of energy and emotion on, on the field. We'll see. So. What I'm trying to do is just get you to think and brainstorm. Don't think that you can't shoot anything but an interview. You need the interview because we need that audio and that guy or person or woman on camera. But 
If you just think and brainstorm, you can come up with lots of other things that you can shoot as well. Now, does Jordan need to shoot all of these for a minute and a half? No. Pick some that are easy to get and that might be related more directly to whatever you think the storyline's gonna be. So for example, in your head, what do you think the story is gonna be? Why is it news? Uh, we have new players that could possibly help us get to playoffs. Okay, so introducing some new players to, the, it's a sports package, so we're presuming it's a sports interested audience. So you're not trying to create a news package for everybody who, at all, it's not like this is earth shattering, but if you're interested in IUP soccer, this is something you should, you should know, right? There's new players who are gonna help you out. So there, now that he has a more specific idea, he's already can think ahead, all right, what footage should I probably get? This is what I want you to write up for me by next Tuesday. I want you to pick a topic, something that's not too challenging to shoot. I don't want anybody to say, I have to get in the car and drive an hour. I don't want anybody to bug any vice presidents or faculty or deans. Make it only friends of yours so that the shooting is as relatively easy as you can get it. But I want you to describe not just the topic and what the news angle is, and all of you as journalism majors know what we mean by news angle, but what other footage are you going to shoot? And at least give me five or six other things. Now the other thing that I want you to do is think about weather. <laughs> Look ahead. You're going to be shooting this next week most likely. It might be a little far out for us on the weather map, but you know that it's going to be something like this. So it's not going to be snowing, it might be raining, Hopefully we won't be storming. Let's take a look at this uh, assignment now in a little bit more detail. Now on the back of the assignment, I've given you a handout, which is simply a write-up of how to do a video news package by um, a different author. This is from the yahoo.com kind of help site. So that's just for your reference. You can read that and it'll give you some tips. You don't have to do everything in that. What I'm asking you to do is on the first page. The first bit of good news is that you get to pick the topic. I'm not assigning you a news package. And if you're more interested in public relations, half our students are public relations interested, you can do a public relations news package, meaning that it's more of a promotional press release kind of news package than it is an investigative news, news report. But just, just run it by me and I'll, and I'll give you feedback. What are you required to do? You have to shoot live video with sound of a person talking not you, by the way. You have to be behind the camera for that. So I want you to have a practice shooting with a camera. You have to shoot additional footage of something related to it. That's the B-roll footage that we've talked about. You must produce a complete coherent news package. You can't just stop it at a minute and a half. It has to round off and be done as a news package. So you have to think about that ahead of time. It must be between 1.15 and 2 minutes in length. Now it's a very wide window. And that's partly because as newcomers, you're going to have a hard time picking the sound bites. And some are going to be long and some are going to be short. Sometimes you ask a person a question and they ramble on. Sometimes they give you a one word answer. So I'm going to give you a very wide window. Anywhere between a minute 15 and two minutes is the length that I'm going to ask you to produce. The final product, though, must have at least 10 cuts. So you have to have lots of different kinds of footage that you can put in as B-roll footage. Now incidentally, if you shoot an interview with somebody, and I only want you to really do one interview, don't get two, three, or four different people, unless you want to. Mandatory is one. You can cut that thing up and use it several times. So if I interview, um, who haven't I picked on, Jessica. If I interview Jessica, I could use this part of your interview. I can also use this other part of your interview. That's two different cuts. I wouldn't put them back to back. I would space them throughout the interview, but that would count as multiple cuts. And then I want your voice on camera for certain. Either just doing a, ver uh, a narration and a voiceover, telling us the story and moving us through the sound bites. Or if you want to, you can do a stand up and have a buddy run the camera. And we'll talk again next week about how to frame that shot, maybe how to look into the camera, et cetera. The last thing I put on this page is be careful about your footage. If you borrow a camera from us or you check one out from the library, and we have over 10 cameras that you can check out. You're gonna to have to turn it back in within a couple of days. Make sure that video file is off the camera. It's on your thumb drive. Maybe you have a copy on your home computer. We obviously wanna put some of this footage on the P drive because that's where you're gonna edit your project. Our P drive is our shared storage space that we all have in our class. We do have a limit, 
So I'm gonna ask that you don't put a half hour's worth of video footage on the P drive. You're only making a two minute news package. Put the kind of stuff that you need on there. Other things you're not gonna use, please don't put on the P drive because we're just gonna fill up the space. Good so far? How about any questions yet? You know what to do next week? You're gonna write up a little description, a couple of paragraphs, and I'll put, we'll open up the, the D2L Dropbox and you can put that in there by Tuesday. I'll have a description of exactly what I want on the D2L website so you, can, you know exactly what I'm asking for on that write-up. All right, I have one more thing before we open up our computers today and we learn to start editing with Premiere. I want to have a little fun and show you a news package that is a spoof of news packages. This was produced by the BBC a few years ago and it's pretty funny. So. Uh, particularly uh, those of us uh, who've been in the business for a while. I'm going to turn the volume up so you can hear this guy for a little while. This guy is making a news package about making news packages. So it's pretty funny, but, but he has a British accent, so it's a little hard to hear what he says. Before long, a standard news report visual language established itself, one that's immediately recognizable to anyone. Me has this report. It starts here with a lackluster establishing shot of a significant location. Next, a walkie-talkie preamble from the auteur, pacing steadily towards the lens, punctuating every other sentence with a hand gesture and ignoring all the pricks milling around him like he's gliding through the matrix before coming to a halt and posing a question. What comes next? Often something like this, a filler shot designed to give your eyes something to look at while my voice babbles on about facts. Sometimes it will slow down to a halt, turn monochrome, and some of those facts will appear one by one on the screen. This is followed by the obligatory shots of overweight people with their faces subtly framed out, after which the report is padded out with a selection of lazy and pointless vox pops. Uh, usually get some in the chapter. I think they do have too much. I think what we want to hear is actually what's happening and not what other people think of it. I, I hate this sound sound bites. <laughs> I, I, I don't want some punters that have been in No. I think that's hilarious because he's, he's given a sound bite talking about how he doesn't want people talking on camera like that. I think the self-referential humor just drives me crazy. Visual abstraction to plug another gap now before the report segues gracefully into a bit of human interest courtesy of some dowdy man opening letters in a kitchen and explaining how he's been affected by the issue. When I'm watching the news, I don't really, you know, there's a person talking to me, telling me what's going on, and I don't really listen to what they're saying. It's just news. It's just news. He, unfortunately, was boring, so to wake you up, this is an animated chart, this is a silhouette representing the average family, and this is a lighthouse keeper being beheaded by a laser beam. As we near the end of the report, illustrative shots of pedestrians and signs and a pipe at a window, and then the final summary ending on a whimsical shot of something nearby, accompanied by a wry sign-off. If you're lucky, a bit of wordplay fit for a king, or in other words, a regent's treat. Charlie Brooker, Newswipe, London. Sorry. So, if you want to have some fun with your news package, and you can be that clever about it, I'll give you bonus points. But if you don't want to try to be funny, don't worry about being funny. Just produce a news package over the next couple of weeks. Okay, open up Adobe Premiere, and we're going to get into working with some live video footage today instead of just still pictures. Now, uh, as all of you know, I teach not just in the journalism department, I also teach the leadership classes on campus in the Leadership Academy and I'm director of leadership training and research for the Mid-Atlantic Research and Training Institute here on campus. So last year, I actually had the opportunity to interview Michael Driscoll, president of the university, about leadership. So I thought what I'd do today is bring in a few of those clips, and then you, we could work with that footage so you didn't have to bring any footage in yourself. And uh, we can all be together as we go through learning a little bit of the steps that you, you, you do when you try to put live video clips down on the timeline in Premiere. Go ahead and start a new project. As we learned, this is a really important button, the Browse button here. You want to make sure that your project always looks at your P drive or some other stored place, not the C drive, or else that footage is going to be disappear overnight as our, as our machines get swept because they're lab machines. So I'm going to point this to our section on the P drive. You can name the project if you want. We can just call it test project for today. 
We'll go to the next screen. This is where we had a lengthy conversation last time about all of the video, well, we didn't discuss all of them. The fact that there are so many different video formats today is a nightmare to us as video people. It makes our lives very, very complicated. I've already given you my advice on which one I think you should use just for the sake of file size. We're going to go ahead and use DVNTSC widescreen 48K. That's going to be a 48K audio format. It's only 720 by 480 pixels. That's the lowest resolution that you can use for a widescreen format. So it'll look, it'll look widescreen, but without being high def, essentially. We'll hit OK. This is the normal Adobe Premiere screen. We've spent a couple, couple days on this already. And the only asset we have in our project is basically the sequence that we see here, the timeline. We know the next step, given our four steps, our import, lay the clips on the timeline, compose the clips, and then export. So let's start with the import activity. Go File, Import. You're going to navigate over to the P drive, and inside the information directory in our folder on the P drive are two clips, Driscoll clip A and Driscoll clip B. Now, a little heads up. By the way, while I'm talking, you can go ahead and import both of those. If you use the Control key, or the shift key you can get both at one time. We are all simultaneously accessing the same footage over an internet connection because we're doing it off the P drive. It's very likely it's going to go slow. So don't worry if it takes a while for the footage to load here or to load up in the source monitor or, or to play on the timeline. What we would do in different circumstances is you'd all have your own footage. We wouldn't be all accessing the same clip. And, or you could move it to the desktop and it would run off your hard drive and not be running off the internet connection. So, All right, so let's just uh, look at this briefly. If you double click the first clip, I call it uh, right here, it's labeled as clip A. Uh, this is me in our, our journalism classroom 418 interviewing Driscoll last year. Uh, excuse me, President Driscoll last year. This here is called a crossing shot. One camera is crossing my body so that it gets his face a different camera is crossing his body so he gets my face. It's actually very poor technique to shoot two people from the side so that they're in profile. And again, we'll talk more about shooting next week. So it's better to have a crossing shot where you can see both of their eyes in one camera and then the other guy, both of his eyes are in the other camera. So we have two cameras. Now I've already manipulated this footage so that they have the exact same audio. Typically, one camera would have a different, slightly different audio than the other one. And I've specifically built them in two different formats to show you that if Adobe Premiere can read the format, no matter what it is, you can drag it to the timeline. So in a few seconds here, we're going to drag different kinds of video footage to the timeline. It will all marry itself together nicely, and we'll have a nice video product when we're done. Before we do, let's use one of our tricks. We've already learned this. If you right-click and find the properties item. Now in this case, because you're inside Premiere, it's not at the bottom like it is on the operating system right click, it's, it's over there. So on the first clip, hit properties, and you can see that this video file format is 1280 by 720, that's the pixel resolution. It's 29.97 frame rate, that's standard. It has a 44K audio track, and it has a pixel aspect ratio of 1. That means it has square pixels. If you do the math, you'll discover that produces a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. It's a widescreen format. Close that and go to the second clip and hit right click, and you'll see that this is a different format video. This is actually in, uh, I think this is the MPEG, no, this is the QuickTime. The other one's an MPEG-4. This one is 1440 by 1080, but because it has a pixel aspect ratio of 1.3, it's still widescreen. It still has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. It has a different audio format. It's 48K. No problem. Adobe Premiere is going to love this. We're going to drop it on the timeline. It's still going to be able to read it. The first thing to do is double click uh, clip B, which is me, because I'm going to tell you what I want your clip to have in terms of content. Now, in your case, you would watch your footage, pick the sound bites that you like, maybe temporarily drag them to the timeline so you have these clips, and you would construct your news package kind of dynamically over time. I'm going to say we're going to produce three clips pretty quickly here. One of me asking a question, one of President Driscoll answering the question, 
and then another clip of me asking a second question so that I can show you another trick. So let's go to the first footage. So we're going to go to the clip by double clicking it. It's going to open up in the source monitor here. And we're going to trim the clip even before we drop it on the timeline. Trimming it means we're just going to narrow it down to the part that we want. And it's just going to be a few seconds of me asking a question. So I've got to find that. I'm going to watch this and listen to it. I'm going to find the start point. I'm going to hit the letter I for end point. Then I'm going to watch myself ask the rest of the question. And I'm going to hit O for out point. And that's going to define a region on, the time, on this little tiny timeline that says that's the clip. And then I'm going to drag the picture of the clip down to the timeline to create that clip. So you can do it with your headset if you choose. I'll go ahead and play it up here. Oh, happy to have. Oop, that's really loud. Let me turn down my volume. Each of the clips has a different volume, too. Happy to. Thank you for sharing that. You know what? All right, so it sounds like I'm about ready to ask a question. So as we go, let me just show you a couple of the tricks that I use. You see the VU meter over here? It disappears after a slight pause. I want to find a clean edit point where there isn't any sound, so that it doesn't sound like the, jump, the, the audio just went jump in and out, like I got cut off. So I'm going to watch the VU meter to where my voice seems to drop out. I can go frame by frame by using the arrow keys on the side of the keyboard. And this allows me to go one frame by one frame until I find a frame that seems to be a good edit point. For the sake of time, I won't spend a tremendous amount of time discovering that today, but this is where you get faster as an editor, is you kind of look at the faces, you, you use these keys, and you get much, much quicker at deciding where you want to go in and out. So I'll decide that this is where I'm going to go in, so I press I for end point. You can see it created something here on the timeline. Thank you for sharing that. You know, one then I'm going to listen to my question. Is it, nobody just jumps into being a president of the university. Stop. Okay, so I know he's going to talk next. So I'm going to hit O for out point. What I've done now is I've said to the software, look, I only want these frames, this clip, for whatever I'm about to do next. I want to remind you that you're not doing any damage to the raw file. The raw video file is never damaged by the editing software because this is non-destructive, non-linear digital editing. So I'm simulating that I'm going to grab a clip. Once you've decided the in and the out point, then simply take the picture with the left mouse click and drag it and drop it on the timeline, just like you did with your pictures in the earlier assignment. You're always going to get this question early on in the project because the video file format of my clip does not match the video file format of the project I'm trying to create. This is 720 by 48 pixels. This is 1440 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. So it's asking me, should I change the sequence to match the clip, or should I change the clip to match the sequence? We want to do this one. We want it to stay 720 by 480. So hit Keep Existing Settings. Now it looks like I zoomed in, but we know why it looks like that. Because it has more pixels that, than what will fit comfortably in 720 by 480. Right? So the 1440 is twice as big, so it looks as if I've zoomed in. And all we're going to do is the trick we learned with the digital pictures. Double click the clip down here on the timeline so that it's now open over here in the source and go to effect controls and scale it down. So we're just going to scale this picture down to something more comfortable. I'm going to do it a little too far just to prove something to you. Even though these video file formats are different, the majority of the ones that you will shoot with today's equipment are still 16 to 9 aspect ratios. They will fit exactly in this window if you want them to. You might have to scale it. In this case, I might have to scale it to close to 50%. But it will comfortably fill this. Do not allow there to be black bars ever in any of the videos you make for me. I don't want to see black bars on the top or the sides, top and bottom or the sides. All right, so scale it comfortably. Now, for this particular clip, I'm just going to fill the window. We purposely shot this with a lot of extra space around it, knowing that we were going to be able to zoom in. But for this clip, let's just leave it there so we have a nice, comfortable clip. The next task is going to be to put the second clip in. So let's double click 
the camera footage that has President Driscoll looking more directly into the camera. Now this is a much longer clip, but again, I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to skip the part where I'm asking the question. It's a little loud. It might be too loud. Let me just quiet that down a little bit. The gradual development of leadership skills to maybe eventually someday lead to the kind of responsibilities you have today. He's about to stop me. All right, so I'm going to use my arrows, go back just a half a second here, where I get some silent feed, I for endpoint. So you should put I there. Again, more tricks. I know that he's going to answer for 10, 15, 20 seconds. So I don't want to watch all that 20 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, scrub the playhead. I, ca I can't get this thing out of the way, by the way. So. And I'm going to watch my face to see when I talk again. Because when I start talking again, it's probably near the end of where he talks. And sure enough, I'll go ahead and just play that. Bingo. So that's the end. Now you might want to just play it until you get to that part of the footage and then you can put the out point. We're not being real exact today because we're kind of in a rush. We're just showing you how to put some clips on a timeline. Now let me walk around. Does anybody have issues or questions about this? Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. The, uh, the input. For him? Yeah. Okay, so find the part where I, he starts talking. Just move your playhead. Uh, go way, way, way to the beginning. This is a really big clip. Yeah. All right, so that's me asking the question. When I'm done, hit I. And then when he's done, hit O. You okay, Jordan? Mackenzie? Okay. Katrina? Go back here, take a quick look. You good? Everything looks good here. Cassandra, look good? Okay. I'm just going to verify. Lauren, any questions? Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Oh, it's, there's a black spot in the footage, so just drag that back farther. This one? Yeah. Here, and then when you find I'm done, hit I, and then when he's done, hit O. Okay. That's a 33-minute clip, and you, only, you really only want, you probably, well, that's my, that might work fine. Okay, when you find that clip and you have it defined in the, in the source, just drag it down to the timeline and you have a second clip. You want to make sure that they snap together. You don't, if you put a clip and it doesn't snap, then there could be blank footage, blank frames in between. And you'll know that if you press your playhead, it's going to go black for at least a couple of frames. And that's not what we want. So that that snapping capability of Adobe Premiere to make sure that you line your footage up exactly so the end of this frame is the beginning of the next frame is a, is a big advantage to us. So now when you play it, I want you to just glance at my screen as you watch how this plays. I'm going to ask the question and then there's going to be a cut as he answers the question. Okay, I haven't yet scaled the second clip. Notice that it has a different amount of zoom because it has a different amount of pixels. It's a different style of footage. So I've got to double click the second clip, go to the effect controls, and I've got to scale this a bit so that it fits comfortably. Now, again, a piece of advice. This isn't a really uh, fantastic shot. And most of this 20 seconds is a President Driscoll, so why even look at the back of my head? Why don't we take advantage of the fact that we have extra pixels and simply zoom in? So I'm going to keep this thing zoomed in to a degree. I'll go all the way back out to 100 percent. And then I'm going to double click the clip over here. This is the second technique we learned on how to manipulate the, the uh, scale and, and position. And I'm going to reposition this so that really President Driscoll's in the center of the screen. And this proves to you that you can slide that image around relative to the camera so that it looks like as if you had a different camera, one that was zoomed in more and had a different position on it. This way, the audience gets to spend most of their attention on him, not on the back of my head. So that's the second clip. And you can play it, and you can see that you get two clips talking. Oh, 
Why did that go quiet? There we go. Okay, while I'm playing this, notice where the VU meter is, by the way. I purposely made the first clip too quiet. It only bounces to below negative 12. The second clip bounces up to negative 6. And I did that on purpose so that you'd realize when you bring in different footage into your timeline, into your editing bay, it's not automatically audio balanced. <laughs> it could cut, one could be soft, one could be loud. You still have to use all that audio editing uh, ability that we, we worked on in Adobe Audition. Nearly all those tools will, will be here in Adobe Premiere as well. It's, over time, Adobe has made all of its software pretty compatible. So one tool works pretty much the same in the other software. So you might still have to do some audio editing as well as video editing. Right? You want to make the pictures do what you want. You also want to make the audio do what you want. The other thing that you might do with your footage, it, this happened to be shot in a very well lit room, everything looks OK, is you might actually have to manipulate the brightness of some of the clips, the color balance of some of the clips, which we, we discussed way back in the digital photo section of the course. You might have to do manipulation of the images so that they all look better and look matched. You wouldn't want one to have a slight blue tint, another one to have a slight orange tint. That would be really obvious. So you'd have to match them at least so that they both had a blue tint or an orange tint or hopefully had no tint whatsoever. So keep that in your mind. We can always work on those techniques as you start bringing your footage in next week. We can learn some more tricks about that. The third clip we wanted is of me asking one more question. So let's go back to clip B. When he's done talking, and again, this might go really slow because we're all accessing the same clip over the internet connection, but we simply want to find where I get to ask another question, which is about here. I think that's a little too far. So uh, I'm not exactly sure this is right, but I just want to demonstrate how you put a third clip in. So I'm going to hit, here's me asking a question. All right, so that's, that's roughly another th third clip that we have to manipulate. So let's take this clip and drag this one to the timeline. And this time the difference is, Again, taking advantage of the fact that we have high definition footage, but we're dropping the, the resolution down to 720 by 480, is when we double click this one, I'm not actually going to rescale this. I'm going to simply reposition it so that I'm the only person on camera. Now it looks like I have a third camera in that environment that was simply focused on me in what we call an ISO, an isolated shot. But I didn't. I had a wide shot, but because I had so many pixels in my high def format, I could just slide it, him out of the way, and we have an isolated shot now. Now, I want to tell you as a working professional in videography and uh, media production that there's a lot of tricks that you develop over time that speed up your work, keep it very high quality, and make your job easier. So my clients don't know that I can do that. But they're really impressed by the fact that I can manipulate that image to zero in on just what I want the audience to see, right? So that's one of the tricks that makes things faster. But you have to be careful. If a client needs a high resolution final product, I couldn't necessarily do this. I'm making this product 720 by 480. That's low resolution, right? That's the old resolution, in fact, but it's widescreen. That might not be OK. If I know that the person's going to put it on a DVD, or they're going to show it on a high definition projector, I can't do this, because I'll end up with a low resolution project that's trying to be displayed on a high resolution monitor or something. On the other hand, if they're only going to put it on the internet, this is a little secret, the internet is streaming video. It's automatically compressed. People can't really tell if you put a 720 by 480 image up on a YouTube video versus a 1080 or a 1440. That's been my experience, except for professionals who really have a clean, keen eye for this. So if I know the client's only going to put this on the internet, I'll do a 720 by 480 final product like we've been doing the last couple of weeks. 
And I get the advantage of having high resolution video footage shot, but a low resolution final project, and they can't tell. When it goes up on the internet and gets highly compressed and gets streamed through their phone, it looks great. See what I'm saying? Now, you know this, right? Because we've already spent the entire semester understanding the fundamentals of what resolution means, what color bit depth means, what compression does, lossy versus lossless. It's that kind of knowledge that becomes practically useful in the job market, where you not just know that you take a picture and drop it into a Dropbox to put it on Facebook, or to take a video and upload it to YouTube. You know what's really going on. <laughs> and you can use, take that knowledge and, and do things with it that other people can't figure out how to do. Again, I want to just stress, the reason I teach the class the way that I do, it's not a paint by number class, right? At no point have I given you a sheet that said, here's 21 steps, check them off as you go, and you will make something that'll look fine. Now walk out of here and not know how you did it. Throughout the entire semester, I've said, here's the problem to solve, go to it. You get stuck, I'll help you, but we're gonna make this thing and you're gonna learn how to do it. And you're gonna learn how to do it. So when you're done, you can do it again or you can do it in a different way, or someone could give you half the problem and you can go the rest of the way. That's really, really important. I've said it throughout the semester. Learn hard things. Learn hard things so that you have to be paid. Remember that, Mike? I've said it many times, haven't I? If all you know is easy stuff, I do not have to pay you much money at all. I can go get somebody off the street to come do this if you ever don't work out. But if what you know is hard and most people can't do it, I gotta get out my wallet. I gotta start paying you money for that, right? Because you're a valuable commodity, I gotta pay you. So we're learning hard things this semester specifically so you're more valuable in the job market and you get paid. And I've had lots and lots of students write me notes afterwards. Some years later, thank you Dr. Lauber for being that tough because I seem to have an edge on the job market. I know what I'm doing out here. A lot of people just know how to drag and drop, drag and drop. That's all they can do. Okay, we're going to wrap up in a few seconds here. So you now know that you can put a clips on the timeline. All you've got to do is get the footage. You've got to record your voiceovers. Now, if you do them in audio, use Audition if you want. You can record directly into Premiere. We're going to learn next week some tricks on shooting. So you shoot video as good as you can shoot it. And you're guaranteeing me that your footage is going to work in Premiere because we asked you seven days ago to verify whatever you shoot with will get into Premiere, right? Are there any other questions about this before I let you go? Do you feel comfortable with this? Cassandra, what to do next Tuesday? You're going to write up a project and drop it in the Dropbox so I can give you feedback on it. I might say to you, look, hey, Cassandra, that, that, that's not a good one because it's not going to work out real well, right? Or I might say, Kayla, you didn't write enough. I need to see more details so that you're really prepared for that. That's the kind of feedback I typically give. Then you're going to work on a news package over the next week or so. And then we're going to get into web development. How do you make a web page? How do you build a blog? How do you put a video into a web page so that you build basically a newspaper website? We're, by the end of the class, we're going to build a newspaper website. All right, that's all I got for you. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later.